Hi, welcome to today's installment of Three Things About a World Quilt. I'm Marin Hansen, Curator of International Collections at the International Quilt Museum. Our museum is located at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, and like museums all over the United States, we are currently closed to the public. But I want to share some of our collection with you, pieces from all over the world. During this time of social distancing, self-quarantining, and area lockdowns, I think looking at and talking about art and folk art can help us feel closer. Stay tuned uh, and take a look at our website to find more uh, three things about a world quilts episodes. And I will remind you of that website address at the end of today's installment. I have a special guest with me today, Jamie Swartz, collections assistant at the International Quilt Museum. Hello. Hi, Jamie. And today hey, we are going to be talking together about this quilt. So let me get right to it. It's called Holiday in Suzdal, and the makers were Lydia Lebedeva and Luba Karlyacheva. And I maybe have murdered those names, but um, it's wonderful that we have known makers because so many of the quilts in our collection are anonymous. So it was made in Vladimir, Russia in 2006. The first thing we want to talk about is that it depicts a very famous architectural landmark in the city of Suzdal in Russia, the Church of St. Nicholas. And you can see it here. So Jamie, what is it about Suzdal? Like why do they have so many ancient churches? Because this is just one of many, right? It's one of many. There are quite a few of these limestone churches uh, in 1864, I believe, the Trans-Siberian Railroad was going to be routed through Suzdal, but like uh, any other railroad planning, it, uh, it didn't, and effectively cut the city off. It right. kind of, uh, it's like a time capsule, or essentially like a kind of like a analog analogous would be like a ghost town, ah. but like a medieval ghost town. Oh, so cool. <laughs> that are now UNESCO World Heritage Sites and the city operates on tourism. Tourists come and make a pilgrimage to see all of these churches and buildings. It's really incredible from what I've seen. So at this point it's sort of like ironically beneficial that the Trans-Siberian Railroad didn't go through <laughs> these towns. It is. It preserved all these amazing architectural wonders. Right, so this, this one particular, was... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Jamie. Uh, oh, I was just gonna say, you can go ahead. <laughs> well, this one, I mean, built in 1720 or started in 1720, finished yeah. in 1729. Pretty amazing that it's lasted this long, especially with all yeah. the tumult that the Soviet Union went through in the you know early to mid 20th century. Yeah, it is really incredible. Uh, and it's I got beautiful. I've seen like a, I've seen many photos of these buildings throughout time, and they've been repainted, of course, you know, keeping with the historical accuracy of the buildings, but they're well preserved. Yeah, they really are. And I love how with the accuracy with which the quilt maker depicted the Church of St. Nicholas. Yeah. I love all those little arches at the, the details, roof line. Yeah. My favorite part about this, which you can see in the detail, is the gold lame that's used for the onion domes at the tops of the buildings, which is really <laughs> quite an inventive use of fabrics. And even on the roof and like the trim of it, it's really, uh -huh. really yeah. fun. <laughs> kind of glitzy yeah. glamorous. And you know, this was something I hadn't noticed immediately, but what I love now is that, and I think my mouse will show it, um the spire on one of the domes she couldn't fit it in the ground in the field of the quilt so she embroidered it into the border which i think is great I you know <laughs> yeah if you, by the borders. <laughs> exactly it's it's busting out <laughs> so the 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 church of saint nicholas is just one building of many throughout suzdal but also it is located within the suzdal kremlin which means fortress 
that was something that was kind of new to me. I knew Kremlin was a generic term, but we always associate yeah. it with the Kremlin in Moscow, but yeah. it really is a, yeah, it's a broad term. So there's a Kremlin in pretty much every city. Yeah, this one predates the one in Moscow. If I'm oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. So it was uh, built in the late 11th uh, or early 12th century. And yeah, buildings kept being added to it. Multiple churches, cathedrals, um, as well as sort of municipal governmental buildings. And here are a couple shots of it. Um, the church on the right, you can see how it is part of a larger compound uh, of buildings. Yeah. And this gives you uh, an idea of its location uh, within the city of uh, Suzdal, which is, yeah, about, well, just, I can't remember how far northeast of Moscow it is, maybe 100 miles or so. Uh, yeah, I think so. A little bit of a distance, isolated enough. Yeah, and it makes sense that they built the Kremlin or the fortress in the, the bend of the river like this. Yeah. So it, a good a defensible area. <laughs> and the Church of St. Nicholas is down here in the southeast corner of the mm -hmm. Kremlin proper. Wow. So this is a Google Street View. I was telling Jamie earlier that I love to be able to see what the quilt maker, what she was depicting. Um, and this is the sort of the view that she would have been um, replicating. And she did take some artistic license here, I think. <laughs> it's not quite it's the, cool. yeah, <laughs> not as beautiful of you <laughs> this way, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely not as glitzy either. <laughs> yeah, I'm not seeing any gold lame there. <laughs> no. This area is also known for its icon painting, a long history of icon painting that turned into lacquered art, huge oh, cool. photos. Yeah, I think a lot of the um, the quilts, there's a strong visual comparison or analogous to it. Mm -hmm. a certain like flatness to the picture mm -hmm. of it. Sort of a very so ornamental. Think, yeah. The background is just right up against the figures almost. The perspective isn't quite there, but just mm -hmm. kind of makes them charming, I think. Yeah, and I feel like that's what makes this exhibition really exciting because it shows this cross-cultural sort of fertilization where we've got these American style quilts, but visually they are still so absolutely Russian. And yeah, yeah. You're, you're bringing in icon paintings really sort of solidifies that. Um, thing two that we wanted to talk about today was the form of costume or dress that the women are wearing as they dance on the riverside here. It's a dress called a seraphon, and that is, I believe, a Persian-derived word, although the, yeah. the dress itself came from Europe proper. Um, but this is the style that was popular in Russia for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, and women peasants had sort of a more plain version, but um, all the way up through the aristocracy, uh, this was the, the form of dress that most women wore. And here's a photograph from the early 20th century. Uh, Sergei Prokudin-Gorsky was a prolific photographer, Russian photographer. Um, and I know I've run across him he took mm -hmm. photographs in the Central Asian uh, republics um, early in the 20th century. So he traveled widely and his photographs are very useful uh, in terms of documenting uh, daily life all over yeah, Russia as well as Central Asia. And I love this color. Does it, it looks like it's hand colored. I think these were Do hand you know? colored yeah. photographs, yeah. Which is, so, it's kind of beautiful. I love that. I do too. <laughs> so and it that, makes like, me wonder, was it really that magenta? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would, I would hope it was. I hope Those, so too. Uh, what, is she holding a plate of berries? That's what it looks like. 
So this is they're very, very vibrant. <laughs> and they are. It's a beautiful, so it's a beautiful documentary photo, but it also is sort of visually and artistically beautiful as well. That, you know, her dress matches the berries and you know, it's yeah. offset up by the spring grass green. And <laughs> kind of has like a strange uh, connection or lineage to the vibrant quilts that we have in this exhibition. In that's, a way. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. And as I always like to do, I went on to uh, the Metropolitan mm. Museum of Arts website because they've got everything. Um, and here yeah. was a really great example of a 19th century seraphon. Oh, look at the like kind of clashing but still harmonious colors of her, the sleeves versus the skirt versus the bodice. Absolutely. <laughs> it just seems very Russian, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I love it. So the third context or the third thing we wanted to tell you about was yeah, the context in which the quilts themselves were made. And this was really a product of the era of Glasnost. So Mikhail Gorbachev was the leader of the Communist Party, the general secretary in the mid 80s. And then he became the, the, pre the last president of the Soviet Union. And he's the one who really instituted this policy of Glasnost, which means sort of openness and transparency, which was a very new concept in the Soviet Union. There had been all kinds of civil unrest, economic problems. Um, and so he was responding to these, these yeah, this, this era of unrest by saying, okay, we need to open up a little bit more. And he thought it would save the Soviet Union and it did the opposite and really ended up, um, yeah, the, the Un Soviet Union collapsed. And I, the era is just so fascinating. Uh, mm -hmm. Lots of people see it as sort of, yeah, East versus West kind of, or the, the East and the West finally coming together. And I was not aware of this board game. Had you ever mm -hmm. seen this before, Jamie? Wow. No, I have not. Oh, I love the cuffs on their shirt sleeves. Yeah, so it's, it's so <laughs> evocative. That's a really great design. <laughs> yeah, it it really is, and it was so it's like, it was like cards. <laughs> exactly, and the whole point of the game was to reach peace, which I think is awesome yeah. because most games, you know, oh, yeah. you're you're supposed to destroy your enemy, but in this yeah, one, yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> it's the anti-risk game. Exactly. So this was an <laughs> era, yeah, when the East and the West, when the Russia and uh, the the Western countries, Europe and the United States, were starting to, you know, there's an era of detente or coming together and um, exchanging. So we mentioned earlier that there was a cultural exchange between um, Russian and American quilt makers. So on the left is a woman named uh, Susan Lewis, and she's a New York quilt maker, and she was invited to go and teach American style quilt making in Russia. Mm -hmm in Suzdal actually um, in the mid 1990s. So this was just post Glasnost, but this Glasnost era was continuing, you know, openness and exchange. Mm. So here she is teaching on the left and then on the right are some of her students. I love the Dresden well, plates. I was just gonna say, but like with the kind of typical or stereotypical printed Russian fabrics, so it's a total culture clash in a way. Right. We're so used to seeing those dressed in plates with the little tiny calicos from the 1930s, yeah. you know, very sweet colors. And these look like they were probably quite bold. <laughs> yeah, even the striped backgrounds or the patterned backgrounds, you like would never see that, almost never see that on dressed in plates. They're always Have, like muslin backgrounds. Absolutely. <laughs> so again, it's this really great uh, coming together of two different oh, cultures and two di different like aesthetic approaches. Yeah, love Here, <laughs> Yeah, so um, Susan and a couple other American teachers went together and taught, and this is the entire group of students and teachers at the Suzdal Kremlin. So you can probably recognize some of the, the towers and the onion domes. And of course, they got to do some cultural exchange activities. Ooh. This is a, a quilt maker and teacher, Diane Holland, on the left, learning how to do a Russian dance from a woman wearing a, one of the seraphon dresses. 
Um, so I'm, I imagine it was a real pleasure for both sets of people to come together yeah. over quilts, but also exchange other kinds of cultural information and activities. Yeah. So that's, I love the wigs that they're currently wearing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're in full so on national dress. <laughs> So this, that's today's installment of Three Things About a World Quilt. It was a pleasure to work with Jamie on this exhibition. We hope um, wow. that when uh, social distancing and quarantining ends, that you'll be able to come to the International Quilt Museum and see these pieces in per person. Uh, in the meantime, we do have an online exhibition where you can see all of the quilts from Glasnost and Folk Culture. And we also, I have a link there listed at the bottom. You can hear more of these three things about a world quilts uh, videos uh, at that URL. You can also find it just on our homepage, uh, internationalquiltmuseum.org. So Jamie, tell me about the quilt behind you before we go. Uh, this quilt is unfortunately not in the exhibition, <laughs> but it's a constellation of a Scorpio or Scorpion. Right. It's really beautifully embroidered, and it kind of evokes the, if you remember back to one of the first slides, the onion dome that's very blue with the gold stars that are painted on it. It looks uh, looked like, say, it probably took uh, inspiration from that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. <laughs> yeah. That sort of cosmos effect. Uh, and I am, I happen to be in front of a monastery in Moscow, Russia. So again, beautiful use of gold lame fabrics and embroidery. Yeah. So again, we hope you'll be able to come to the International Quilt Museum in Lincoln, Nebraska and see these in person. Thanks for joining us today. Bye-bye. Thank you.